everyone, this is Ace, and I'm out here to remind you that we at Game Over always strive to give you a hell of an eye-opening experience. So please remember to subscribe, like, share, and hit that bell notification icon so that you're alerted every time we send a badass new episode your way. Now without further ado, let's get on with the show. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Game Over. We have a special preview for you guys today. One of my personal favorite games of all time, Elden Ring. I'm joined by a few friends of mine. Duca, you want to say hello? Hello. And Hellion. I love sorcery. <laughs> so I'm guessing you guys are as excited as I am for making this video. This has been a long time coming. Like, dude, I've been waiting forever to even understand what this game is going to be about. Is it going to be another Sekiro? Is it going to be a Dark Souls game? Since I haven't seen any footage, I was skeptical of what we're getting. But now that it's finally come out, I couldn't be more excited, man. This looks amazing. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so for all you new players and old players alike, I wanted to start by going through a little bit of the lore, since it's the same in some respect, but also different. It feels like it's a lot more epic this time around, since we have big names like George R. R. Martin working on the story, the famous author of The Song of Fire and Ice and Game of Thrones. You are no longer the chosen undead or the Ash. God, how I've longed for those days, though. Instead, you are the Tarnished, a dead man walking, pretty much. A condition that was afflicted upon the denizens of humanity by the would-be usurpers and offspring of Queen Marika, the Eternal, the Queen of the Lands Between. The new area will be enjoying in the new game. Now, as far as I can tell, the source of the Queen's immortality seems to be the mighty Elden Ring, which is also the source of the Ur-Tree, the pillar of life in this new illustrious world of ours, as well as our fancy new Firelink Shrine for all you Dark Souls 3 undead out there. The great tragedy this time around, though, seems to be that the magnificent Elden Ring has been shattered into shards that are referred to as the Great Runes, which have been separately claimed by the Queen's children and our new lovely executioners. Except if you're Hellion, of course, and you're just super OP with those sorceries. Yeah, and maybe like the Boulder Side Sword, just because. <laughs> now, your mission, dear Tarnish, should you be willing to accept it, is to hunt down these unfathomable creatures and recover the runes in order to restore the Elden Ring to its former glory. Undo the devastation caused by their evil and become a bona fide badass. I can't wait. Perhaps once the game comes out, there will be this intensive lore for all those fanatics out there to dig into. But as for now, the story seems straightforward, but the scale is just massive. I mean, guys, look at this. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Of course. And so this is as the old. Earth Tree that I was talking about. And this is where you start. So every time you die, your main hub would be that big tree, the source of all life, as it seems. And the one that gets its power from the Elden Ring. It's so big that you actually need a horse. <laughs> a mount in Dark Souls? Duka, are you seeing this? What is that about? Well, when I get to play Elden Ring, I'm definitely going to pay a lot of attention to atmosphere because I really just respect and enjoy uh, atmosphere in games, especially open worlds. I really think it's gonna be a really good thing, even though Dark Souls games had this this kind of mix of uh, linearity and uh, open worldish kind of game. You needed to figure stuff on your own, like a sandbox game. That's quite true, but I do disagree in that there aren't that many ways to tackle certain parts of the world because, for example, in a sandbox setting as you just mentioned, you would be able to approach certain levels 
in many different ways. You know, it's an open world where you could do anything that you want and you would still be able to work, right? It'd be dynamic depending on how you interact with the world. But with all of the Dark Souls games so far, it's always been find this key or talk to this person or examine this thing in order to activate the next region. So it's never been the same idea of a sandbox more than it is right now with the Elden Ring. At the same time, I didn't hate the formula because it worked. Gameplay that worked for all the previous Souls games, they're going to keep those certain aspects because it was their original trademark. From Software was able to create this original formula that allowed you mm. to utilize very simple mechanics in a skillful way so that you're able to advance further. They'll probably never change that. They'll keep the same core mechanics in there, but add a few twists and graphical fidelities that'll make it look even smoother and cooler than before, as we're seeing in the trailer right now. Guys, it seems that this time around, we're dealing with a much bigger scale, not just in terms of the world, but in terms of the bosses. I don't think anyone is talking about this, but have you guys noticed that most of these bosses are being fought in an open world, in an open field? In other words, it won't be the same we've had to go through before where we go through the end of the hall and there's this big stage where you're fighting a boss. Instead, cool. you could start fighting the boss anywhere in the world. Which is so massive. like Shadow of Colossus. Exactly. Exactly. No boss like Shadow of Colossus, yeah. Which is maddening. <laughs> like, can you guys imagine just strutting and enjoying the scenery of this dystopian world and then all of a sudden a boss pops out of nowhere and you're having to fight for your life? Dude, I can't wait. It just, it looks so epic. And it looks exactly as how I would assume a, the next gen Dark Souls game would be. Obviously they're going to milk it as much as they possibly can. There's going to be DLCs and new areas to explore. But the fact that there are going to be mounts this time around, the fact that it's a dynamic world where anything can happen, where if you're just hanging out with your friend, you could possibly be attacked by a dragon, a fire-breathing dragon or a world boss, for example. I can't wait to see what's in store here. From what we're seeing so far, it might be far too ambitious, but knowing the creators and knowing how they're keen on giving us the best quality ever, I'm guessing they're not gonna screw this up. I'm guessing it's going to be as advertised. Mm, I wouldn't say so. There's almost always cut content in games because no time or something like that. Maybe. I want you guys to tell us what you think in the comments. Let us know if you're as excited or if you're a bit skeptical that it might not be as big as they're portraying. Well, sensationalism is a thing, so... <laughs> I understand your skepticism, but to be honest with you, I can't help but be excited for this, man. I've been waiting so long for this game, and I think they're actually going to do it. Miyazaki and George R. R. Martin, they're not small mm -hmm. names. They wouldn't contribute mm -hmm. in a project that they don't think is going to be outstanding in every way, shape, or form. Mm. I'm really excited to play Elden Ring for 10 years when I get enough money to buy a PC or a console that can run it. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to play it on PS4. Also, for, for, every, for every 1,000 likes, we're going to get you closer to that goal. How about that, Duca? Huh. Yes, I agree. <laughs> All right. Well, here you have it, guys. Help fulfill this poor... Broken kid's dream. <laughs> Help yes. fulfill this broken kid's dream. <laughs> Till next time, guys.